And we are live. Hi, everybody. It's Jeremy, the existential wine guy, uh, coming at you from the kitchen of Chez Meron, where I usually do, uh, usually uh, every Wine Wednesday around 530. Uh, I like to talk about the uh, experience of being alive through wine. Uh, and uh, I'm here to share a couple thoughts with you. Uh, as uh, our Wine Wednesday progresses, first and foremost, uh, I'll let you know what I'm drinking today. Um, from New Clairvaux Vineyards and uh, Amy, or Amy, I should say, uh, Amy Sensori, she's the winemaker. She makes extraordinary wine. And um, although I have to say that Petite Syrah is not always my go-to varietal, um, I'm going to open this one up and see how it is. Um, Everything I've tasted from Amy has been absolutely extraordinary, and I imagine this is going to be no different. Uh, a couple of just rambling thoughts today. Uh, one thing that I like to do is, as we talk about wine, uh, specifically talking to people about what their aha moment was with wine. What is What was that moment that brought you to the understanding that not necessarily you're an expert on wine, but there's certainly more to what's in the glass um, than anything else. Uh, for me, I, you know, I, I was, uh, you know, I was a big fan of you know beer, uh, especially, especially craft beer, uh, spirits as well. And wine for a long time was just, you know, uh, something I enjoyed, but uh, it, it wasn't really sort of like my go-to thing. Um, you know, and, and that certainly changed for me, uh, or I should say has changed uh, for me over the years. And I've had just these wonderful experiences, whether it was, uh, you know, a, wine, a glass of wine uh, with a meal or the people that uh, I was with while I was sharing a bottle of wine. Uh, very often is going wine tasting and uh, just, you know, sitting around or being around people who are incredibly knowledgeable about wine and sharing their insight and sort of letting me tag along with that. So, uh, you know, it's, it's just been really fun. So um, I'm going to ask it right now, but I'll ask it uh, throughout uh, the, today's broadcast is, you know, do you have a wine moment? Do you have that aha moment that said, oh, yes, I, I, I kind of get it. Uh, for me, I, you know, I don't think as I've had just one wine moment, I've had lots of wine moments. I've had... Uh, Moments where uh, driving, you know, uh, just uh, up to wineries uh, with uh, my then girlfriend, but now wife. And, uh, you know, uh, having that experience uh, with her. I think um, certainly traveling to different wine regions in California, specifically, you know, we talk about uh, I'm in Sac based in Sacramento, and we are an hour and a half away from everything. You know, we're 40 minutes from Lodi. We're about an hour from Amador and El Dorado County. We're about an hour and 15 minutes uh, from Sonoma and Napa. So uh, I've had just actually, it's not that I had just one moment. I've had all the uh, accumulated amount of moments that have, uh, you know, have, have shaped uh, not just uh, how I consume uh wine, libations in general, but how I ch I've chosen to think about it as well. So uh, I wanted to, you know, talk a little bit about that and, uh, you know, hopefully get some of your feedback, uh, both on Instagram and on Facebook. So uh, before we kind of delve too quickly into that conversation. Uh, if you're just joining me, I'm Jeremy, the existential wine guy. Uh, I uh, like to explore the idea of being alive through wine, the experience of being alive through wine and what that brings to my life and your life and you know everything in between. So uh, I was, uh, I, I've had a, a good chance to, uh, to ask many people their wine aha moments, and they've been all over the place. I, I have to say, uh, you know, it, certainly uh, when I was interviewing um, a, a winemaker up at uh, uh, up in Sutter Creek, you know, he, he started off on a totally different thing. You know, he was when he started getting into wine or be, learning about wine a little bit. He was actually. You know, he was a skydiver, a professional skydiver, and uh, he was just doing kind of amazing things with that. And wine was nowhere near 
uh, you know, his soul, you know, and later on, uh, as he started to learn more about wine and as he started making his own personal choices of, you know, what he wanted to do and how he wanted to live, wine became a major component of that. He became a winemaker and opened up uh, the uh, winery up in uh, Sutter Creek. So uh, let's uh, give this a taste real quick. Mmm. Just fantastic. I was lucky today. Um, my I, I go to this uh, fantastic uh, barber uh, in Sacramento, and he is uh, Anthony the Barber. You can find him on Facebook and Instagram. He's got like a, this amazing, huge um, a following that I wouldn't necessarily suspect a barber would have, but he, he's got it. And um, he also, along with the barber shop, uh, which is a little high on the higher end these days, he also has a full bar that goes around, around with it. So when you sit down in his chair, he is offer, usually offering up, you know, some sort of craft beer, some sort of spirit. And, you know, today I asked for wine and got it. I had to wait a little bit for it, but it was absolutely fantastic. And just like that experience of oh, yeah, getting your hair cut and getting all quaffed up and having uh, a glass of wine at hand. It, it, was, it was really a lot of fun. Before we go any further, I want to say hi to a couple people, and I'm going to have to reach into the camera here because, you know, my sights aren't as good as they once were. Uh, but uh, Suzanne House Byron uh, joined. Thank you so much. Diane Keaton, it's uh, good to see you. Uh, and who else do we have? Um, let's see. Oh, actually, I've got a question from Diane. Love a good Chardonnay. Any advice? Wow, uh, not to get away from the aha moment, but Chardonnay is a tricky thing. I mean, I think there's this sort of traditional California Napa style of Chardonnay, which is a lot of oak and, and um, full malolactic. So you're getting oaky and creamy notes to it, very, very soft. I remember walking into um, the uh, Francis Ford Coppola winery one time and putting my nose and tasting their Chardonnay, and it was like a stick of butter. So if you like that, um, I actually, the uh, that's an absolutely fantastic one. Uh, also, the butter notes, if you like that, uh, we uh, in the industry call it uh, cougar juice, but Rombauer makes a uh, you know pretty fantastic Chardonnay. Um, for me personally, though, I like to go the other way. Um, I think that outside of Napa and the Sonoma area, uh, where you get those buttery notes, uh, buttery and oaky notes, uh, winemakers kind of go the different way. They don't really want to necessarily be associated or make that style. So what they'll do is they won't put the Chardonnay through full malolactic, or maybe they'll actually go straight to stainless steel. So instead of those buttery notes, you're going to get much more floral and more, much more crisp notes to the Chardonnay. Um, you'll actually get a little bit more of the earth or the terroir as well. So, um, you know, uh, for me, I tend to stay outside of the whole Napa Sonoma thing when it comes to Chardonnay. Uh, but if that's what you like, that's what you like, and you shouldn't uh, feel bad about it. Uh, and uh, again, you know, you, you can go to Rombauer, uh, Francis Ford Coppola. Again, they do make a, 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 an incredible uh, Chardonnay as well. So, uh, Diane, I, I hope that uh, helps out. Anyway. Um, would love to hear more from you guys about your aha moments. You know, what are the wines that made you uh, appreciate that there was something more to it? Uh, I know I've told the story a little bit before, but, you know, my dad is actually more the guy who got me into wine, uh, which is kind of surprising for my family. Uh, I got to ask him about it. Uh, I, you know, I wanted to ask him how he got into wine because, uh, you know, he, I wouldn't, he wouldn't consider himself necessarily a connoisseur, but he certainly knows what he likes. He likes those, you know, a, a big Cabernet with a lot of earth into it. Like, you know, you look down at the bottom of the glass and there should still be some dirt uh, right there at the bottom. And one thing he was talking about is he grew up as like, you know, this uh, suburban kid in uh, Southern California. And uh, in his family, wine just wasn't a thing. Uh, and it wasn't until he got into college uh, and started mixing up. He went to San Francisco State uh, in the 60s and was part of all of that sort of, you know, let's call it nonsense, but, you know, all of that fun. And as he was expanding his knowledge and his experience, uh, he ran into people that, you know, uh, wine was part of, you know, they were people from outside of California, people who had lived all over the world and outside of the California and outside of the uh, United States at that time, you know, it, you know, wine was part of the culture, especially in Europe. So when he met these friends, they're the ones who brought that to him. And he started getting into wine and started sort of exploring what he liked in wine, uh, 
tripping off to Napa and Sonoma. Uh, he did a lot of fun stuff because uh, one of the times I, uh, he'd bought a, a case of wine, but it was a wine club and they actually had like put a label on it. So it put his name on it. So Marin Cellars, uh, which uh, proved uh, kind of interesting uh, later on. Because as I went off uh, to college and I was starting to study mythology and I was, you know, reading things like, uh, you know, Homer's The Odyssey, uh, you know, I was telling my dad about this. I was on the phone and he said, hey, well, you know, we're in that. I'm like, what? So, like, this interesting little moment uh, in how it, like, loosely sort of connected me to wine is that Odysseus, uh, we, most of us know, uh, uh, battles the Cyclops and he gets him drunk first and is able to you know, sort of take him out. But, you know, you, if you watch the movie, you're not going to know where that wine came from. And uh, where it came from was Marin. Uh, he was a priest of Apollo, or that's the uh, Roman version of Dionysus. And the god of wine. And uh, it was uh, Marin who gave Odysseus the wine that was able to slay the Cyclops. And I was, th you know, that was like a really interesting connection for me uh, to see, like, you know, like an interesting connection to wine. And so it's just something else that, like, you know, furthered my interest in it as well. So, um, you know, as I developed a palate, uh, it really kind of started with beer. Uh, you know, because I was never like a Budweiser guy, but I'd gone to England and I'd had a couple of those styles of beers. I'm like, oh, wow, this is kind of amazing. And when I came back, I, you know, I was, I was you know, too cool for school. I, I, I couldn't necessarily, uh, you know, have a Coors or a Budweiser anymore. It was always something more interesting than that. So I started developing my palate with beer. Um, and I find it really interesting. I have a lot of friends who are craft beer enthusiasts and they, you know, sometimes they'll give me a little ribbing, uh, calling me a little bit of a snob for being so much into wine, which I think is wrong. What I find more interesting is as the craft beer craze keeps moving and grooving, um, you're starting to have guys and women who, uh, end up creating a palette where they can discern like different types of hops or, uh, you know, in things like that, and they're experiencing new flavors. Uh, and for me, that's an absolutely amazing jumping off point into wine because where beer, the flavor profile may go out like this, wine just goes out like that. So I actually now have friends, in fact, a buddy, uh, Levi, I know you're not watching, but that's okay, uh, just texted me, and, he, and I gotta say, Levi's a beer guy. He's absolutely fantastic. He's got a great palate. He knows what he's talking about. He'll research beers. And just recently, he started texting me bottles of wine that he's drinking, as if like almost my approval. And I'm looking at this stuff going, oh my God, that's absolutely fantastic. So eventually I'm gonna have to sit his ass down and find out, hey, what was the thing that brought you to wine. So anyway, uh, if you're just joining me, I'm Jeremy, the existential wine guy. I'm talking right now about the your aha wine moments. Um, so for me, uh, you know, like I said, I, I've got a couple of them. I've got these, you know, moments where, um, you know, again, driving off with my girlfriend to go taste wine and go taste wine with friends and really explore different things. I think it's uh, interesting that we do that. We don't, you know, we don't necessarily do that as much with other spirits, or, you know, beer and wine. Sure, I, we can go to breweries and we can go down, you know, many, many pints to be sure. And every and, uh, breweries have been a lot better recently about getting a, uh, you know, sampler out to you. And now, uh, because I just don't drink beer as much as I used to, and certainly can't consume the quantities, I'm, I'm absolutely just. Uh, uh, getting a sampler, and that's about it. So we're talking about uh, the how we explore wine so much differently than any other spirit that we tend to um, that we t that we tend to taste. Anyway, uh, just saying hi to a couple people uh, about town, Debbie. About town, Deb. Thank you so much. It's always good to hear from you, uh, Matt, my man, uh, Matt McCullough, who's an extraordinary wine guy on his own, and probably should be doing something like this for himself. 
uh, an incredible palate. He's uh, one of the guys who gave me one of my first jobs in wine. And an interesting side story about that was um, when we first, uh, when I first uh, arrived at the winery, him and I, we, he was interviewing me, and it was obvious that we just kind of hit it off. It was, it was just kind of a lot of fun. And we had this great conversation. And then uh, he said, well, why don't we, I want to get your opinion and just, you know, I want you to taste a couple of our wines. Um, and we, you know, we, he, he got on one side of the bar, I was on the other, he poured a couple things for me, I gave him my thoughts, and he absolutely was like, you're out of your mind, you're absolutely wrong. I'm like, well, you know, this is what I'm getting. And so he started pouring for himself and tasting, oh yeah, this wine has changed a little bit. Yeah, I am getting those notes. Uh, we ended up going through the entire flight that this particular winery had, which unfortunately is no more. Uh, but it, it was absolutely fantastic. I think we tasted together like, like 13 or 14 wines and what should have been probably a 20 minute interview but like an hour and a half later we're just you know going back and forth and uh, it was really a lot of fun so Matt thank you for that that was that, that just bringing that back up is making me all well up and you know remembering that but it's good to hear from you uh, honey salt coffee oh it's so good to see you as well and who else do we have uh, Mr. Stephen Gray thank you I appreciate you joining Waving right back at you. I appreciate it. Again, it's Jeremy, the existential wine guy. And today we're just kind of playing, you know, uh, loose and fast. We're just talking about, you know, our experiences with wine and what are those, you know, how do those experiences came to come to be? Um, for me, in almost every case, it has been with me hanging out with friends and seeing, you know, whether it's been food and wine or just food and the conversation that follows. And I'm not sure why, uh, why wine uh, tickles our intellect the way that I think that other spirits don't, but it certainly does. And I end up having these, you know, kind of extraordinary conversations with people. And I noticed that it wasn't just happening one time. It was happening a bunch of times that people, you know, we, um, you know, we're, we're, we're drinking wine specifically, and the conversations become a little bit more intense, intellectual, um, it, 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 to use that word, I'm not even sure if I'm really kind of capturing it right there, but uh, it, it really, it, it had a profound effect on me. I, I was starting to see a trend of how people, or how I was reacting with other people and the conversations that we were having. And I noticed that it, we weren't, ha I wasn't having those same conversations with other spirits. So for me, that was another aha moment that's like, oh, this is the inebriation, uh, this is how, this is, th th this is what I wanna drink. I do find it interesting that different alcohols will affect us differently. Uh, for instance, I feel, you know, almost, uh, you know, a little smarter, a little bit more erudite with, with a glass of wine. Uh, you know, with tequila, uh, for instance, I wind up naked on my neighbor's porch. Different alcohols affect us different ways. Uh, and uh, if it's more than just, you know, the, the, the chemical uh, breakdown of alcohol specific. It's, you know, how we, how we decide to distill it. Uh, how we decide to ferment it, how we decide to brew it. Uh, I've had some pretty intellectual conversations with beer as well, but I find that wine is the one that really kind of uh, kind of gets my brain going and gets my thought process moving into a whole nother level. So uh, I'd love to hear it. Does, does anybody else find that as well? I'd love to hear from you in the comments as well. I'm just looking at the comments right here and everything else. Uh, Oh, Diane, thank you as well. I, I, I like, like your response. Um, and Honey Salt Coffee is saying, what's up, Jeremy? You know what? Nothing but love. I've got a glass of wine. I'm talking to people. Uh, you know, it's kind of weird. I, I know that I've missed, uh, I've been skipping almost every other week um, this broadcast. And one of the crazy things is happening, especially at, well, because I'm living in Sacramento, is there's so many extraordinary things going on in our city right now. And even on a Wednesday night, I'm missing two different events that I kind of wanted to go to, but I'd much rather have on my moment talking about wine with you. Hopefully, um, we're going to start seeing some um, on-location uh, Facebook Live and Instagram Live events from me, uh, hopefully starting next week. So I'll let you know uh, when that's going to happen. You know, I'll be doing a story. I'll let you know on Facebook and Instagram. 
Uh, okay, we're coming up on close to 20 minutes and uh, still having a good time with it. One more sec. Mm. Seriously, absolutely fantastic. I know that I've had their wines on uh, my broadcast before uh, for no other reason that I just really like them. Not only do I like the wines, I've, I've had a chance to meet uh, the owner and Amy, the winemaker, and they're just, you know, absolutely fantastic people. So if you, and it's like on a monastery, so they're right next to it. It's really kind of a interesting situation. All right, so what else do we have here? Uh, if you're just joining me, I'm almost done. It's Jeremy, the existential wine guy. I am a wine writer. I, I write about wine. I consult for tasting rooms. And also recently, I'm working out as a, with a wine broker and bringing some just really incredible wines to Sacramento. So if you have questions on any of those, I uh, would love to hear from you. You can just uh, DM me or write something in the comments. Uh, I usually look at all of them and try to get back to everybody and see what's going on. I also have another question. Um, I have uh, you know quite uh, an audience on Instagram, but Facebook really not so much. Um, so I've asked this before, uh, but if it, you know, do you prefer this on Facebook? Do you prefer it on Instagram? Would you want to see both of them happen um, or not? Again, would love to hear from you. So we're at uh, just a little over twenty minutes, so I think I'm about done. But I would like to continue this conversation down the road and sort of more uh, intensely. So please, if you have a moment, if you have, if you wanna share uh, that moment that brought you to wine, I absolutely would love to hear about it. And I would love to even, you know, talk to you about it. So until that time, I'm Jeremy, the Existential Wine Guy. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next week and hopefully with a really kind of cool announcement. Ciao everybody.